So, Kelsey, still talking about bilingual kids, kids that speak more than one language. That reminds me of a, a nice movie, actually, that I saw a long time ago. I think it's from 2004, if my memory doesn't fail me now, called Spanglish with mm -hmm. Adam Sandler. Have you seen that movie? I have. It's beautiful. So, Paz Vega plays a Mexican immigrant who goes to the U.S. with her daughter for a better life. And she gets this job working for an American family in their house. And um, Adam Sandler lives there. And uh, they start having some sort of... Uh, I think it starts as a working relationship that evolves to friendship or even mm -hmm. something else, right, Cass? I don't know if they actually get to have a romantic relationship in that movie, do they? I, I, I might be mistaken, but I think that they don't. I think there's just a really deep connection there. Like, I think there's... Yeah, and I think it's beautiful because of that. It's really wholesome, I would say. I think Ooh, that that, be... that's a nice word, wholesome. What's yeah. that? Wholesome. It's mo like sort of morally good. Like it's it's not uh, corrupt in any way. It's not. There's no, nothing. No bad. There's nothing bad about their rela relationship. Well, I'm bringing this movie up because I remember that there's this funny clip where. Um, I think the mom, she gets mad at Adam Sandler's character because he gives uh, her daughter money. I, I, I think he, uh, he, he bets something with the kids, you know, and then uh, her daughter wins the bet or something like that. And then, you know, the mother gets mad at that, you know, uh, because he gave her money. But then uh, this scene is funny because she doesn't speak English, the mom. She speaks only Spanish. So she needs her daughter to translate for her what she wants to say. And it's really cool to see, like, you know, the translation, the live translation. I'm sorry. Did you give this money to my daughter? Okay, I I made a deal with the kids, all the kids. Oh, no, disculpe me. Oh, no, please. Que no acostumbra usted a preguntarle a los papás si You don't tell or ask the mother when you give a child a fortune. Simplemente por favor. And then, you know, uh, it becomes really hard to understand because, you know, it's like cross-talking there. Yeah. But in terms of language, we have some nice things here to point out. First of all, the question, did you give this money to my daughter? Did you give this money to my daughter? How would you explain the connected speech in this question, Cassie? So basically, we have what's known as elision here. So the D sound, the D in did, and the Y in you basically form a J sound. So what you hear is basically, did you, did you, did you give this money to my daughter? Did you give this money to my daughter? Did you give this money to my daughter? Yeah, and I think that's amazing because, you know, uh, the girl, her daughter, she speaks fluently, right? I mean, uh, both English and Spanish, right? She has great pronunciation. And, uh, and then Adam Sandler's character replies, I made a deal with the kids. I made a deal with the kids. So what does it mean when you make a deal with someone, Cassie? If you make a deal with someone, you're agreeing to certain terms. So if this happens, I will give you this. So this would be considered a deal. It's an agreement. We can use that word as well, like making it, agreeing to do something. And we also have some nice connected speech here, right? Because the uh gets reduced to a schwa sound, uh, uh. And also, we connect made with uh, and then it sounds like made a, made a. And then we say made a deal, made a deal with. I made a deal with the kids. Okay, I, I made a deal with the kids, all the kids. Okay, I, I made a deal with the kids, all the kids. That's how he says it. And then uh, this argument continues in the clip, and we have another short clip to watch. $50 is mucho dinero. But $50 is a lot of money. I, I know, I know. Just say it, just say it. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Come on. I get what you're upset about. Entiendo por qué estás enojada. Excuse me. Oh, permiso. <laughs> I love it was funny when 
What, what do I think you're gonna <laughs> say the same thing? What, yeah, what is it? <laughs> I, I, I think it's like the mom's reaction to when she uses like the swear word. I think it's like, <laughs> like how, what are you saying? How, how could you even say that? Yeah, it's like, it's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was funny how even that the girl translated, right? Even the swear word. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. you see her face after, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing with kids. Nice. It's like you with your, you know, um, with having your code language with your wife. I think they're, they're picking up. They know what it means. They might not, you know, maybe you don't want them to know or you don't want them to use that word, but mm, they're picking up everything. Yeah. We have some nice phrases here, Cassie. The first one, uh, the girl says a lot of money, right? But $50 is a lot of money. But... There is some nice connected speech here that she, she uses. Could you break it down for us? So the A in a lot is pronounced as a schwa, a. Uh, and then we have the T in lot, which is pronounced as a flat T sound. So we pronounce it as a duh. And this then joins with the O in of, which is also pronounced as a schwa sound. So we have a la da, a lot of, a lot mm. of money. But Again, just pointing out the amazing English the girl has. Yeah? A lot of, a lot of money. She speaks just like an American, right? And then uh, Adam Sandler's character, he says this phrase, I get what you're upset about. So just to break down the pronunciation here, he says, I get, I get. So the T there is a stop T. He doesn't say I get, but I get, I get. And then what, another stop T there. Not what, but what, what. So very often this your gets reduced to a your, which is how we hear it here. So what you're, so he says, I get what you're, I get what you're upset. And then again, the T here for upset kind of disappears. And then actually it doesn't disappear because you know, we have a vowel right after for the about. So the T becomes a flap T, the da da sound. So upset, -a, da da, you see? Upset about, upset about. I get what you're upset about. I get what you're upset about. And I believe that he says about in the clip, but it becomes optional. Some people, they say the T here at the end of the sentence. Sometimes you might not hear it. You might hear just about, but either about or about. Those are common ones, but that's how he says it. I get what you're upset about like that. What does it mean, Kelsey, when you say, I get what you're upset about? What does that mean, I get? Yeah, so when you get something, it means that you understand that thing. So he's saying he understands what she's upset about. So we're going to be sharing here some common strategies, right, Kelsey, that parents mm -hmm. use to teach English to their kids or any other second language. I guess we can start by the main point we want to make in this episode. And the main point here is it's important that the child has exposure to the language you're trying to teach as young as possible and as frequently as possible. Mm -hmm. That's the point we are making here. Early exposure as frequently as possible. Yeah. And I would like to illustrate that, Kelsey, by sharing one story mm. about my son, because um, my son now is 12 years old, mm -hmm. but a few years ago when he was younger, my, my wife is an English teacher as well, so we both speak English. And sometimes there were times when my son would be in the living room with us. And sometimes I wanted to talk to my wife, something more adult-like. <laughs> yeah. So our strategy, instead of sending him to his bedroom, was to speak English with each other. So <laughs> I would talk to, the, to my wife in English about these more serious grown-up topics that I didn't want my son to, to hear about. And that strategy worked for a while, you know? <laughs> but after, I guess, I don't know, maybe a one year, you know, it wasn't that long. After a little while, there was this one time I was doing the same thing and then my son stopped playing, he was on the floor, and then he just looked at me and he asked me a question <laughs> about the topic that I was talking about with my wife in English. <laughs> and then I was like, Wait, you got that? You understood? <laughs> Your code was so, completely 
useless now. At that moment, this strategy, you know, wasn't effective anymore. Mm-hmm. But then I started thinking about it, like, how how come he he came to a point where he he started to understand what my wife and I was speaking in English, and then it came the the realization that it was the exposure. Yeah, I mean, uh, we were always very casual about this at home, but there was always exposure to English at home, watching movies together or listening to things in English. My son would watch me or sometimes hear me teaching from home classes in English or these moments where I would talk to my wife in English. You know, so simply by having that exposure that was constant and casual, eventually he got to a point where he picked up He started to pick up things and understand things, and I thought it was amazing. Hey, so this is the end of this lesson, but if you enjoyed learning English vocabulary and pronunciation with it, you should know that this clip was just a part of an episode of the Real Life English Podcast, and we release a new episode every week. So come check it out right now by clicking here on this video.